Spirit of Place, Go Winner, 1982. Let's talk about it. Everyone's listening to Oasis and everyone's listening to Smashing Pumpkins in the mid 90s and Pearl Jam and uh, you name it, Kurt Cobain had just died. And uh, I, I get some money, can't remember where, and I go to the CD shop and I pick out this Goanna, Spirit of Place, and buy it because I was at a party and there were my parents' friends and they're from the generation. I was only four when this came out in 1982. And they said, oh, Shane Howard, one of the absolute best singer-songwriters in Australia. And, you know, you really should hear some of his music. And I'm a, you know, young, uh, aspiring musician, guitar player. And I thought, okay, well, I like Paul Kelly. And I, um, I like John Williamson. So I really should go and have a listen. So I went in, bought CD, and this, the guy behind the counter goes, oh, that's, this is a really, this is a really good album. There's so much more to this album than solid rock. And I was, <laughs> I, I didn't ever know what to say because I actually never heard solid rock. <laughs> On the top of my head, it didn't come to me. I, I honestly didn't know the song all that well. Yeah, I was buying the album. Most people would buy it because of solid rock. So I'm like buying this album completely unawares of the song, the signature song, Shane Howard and the going to band and anything about him. But I bought it anyway, took it home, had a listen, and yeah, I, it became one of my favorite albums very quickly. This book, um, the 100 best Australian albums, doesn't even have Spirit of Place in it. What's going on with that? It's uh, got a lot of albums on there, a lot of great Australian albums, but it's a bit disappointing that it doesn't have Goanna's Spirit of Place. So, were the people at my parents' party and the record salesman right in what they said? Is Shane Howard one of the greatest singer-songwriters in Australia? Is the album Spirit of Place far more than the song Solid Rock? Well, let's have a look. Let's find out together. Just uh, one more time about Goanna Band, please, Threads, if that's okay. Goanna Band, a short history. Formed in Wathorong country in Geelong in 1977 by Shane Howard, Goanna began churning out fresh original folk rock tunes that seemed to typify the Australian existence. In 1979, the Goanna Band, as they were then known, independently released a self-titled EP produced by ex-Dingo's frontman Broderick Smith. This caught the attention of EMI, who subsequently released the EP. By the following year, the Goanna Band had short their name to Goanna and had begun gigging all over Australia, playing festivals and support acts for bands such as Cold Chisel and international artists, most notably James Taylor. Warner Music Group Australia soon got wind of this little eight-piece band and signed them with a record deal in 1982. Goanna immediately began working on their debut album with legendary producer Trevor Lucas, in which the album's first single, Solid Rock, was issued in September 1982, peaking at number two on the Australian music charts. It impressively made it to 31 on the US Billboard chart. In December 82, Goanna's debut album, Spirit of Place, was released and it peaked at number two, just behind Midnight Oil's 10 to 1 album on the Australian music chart. Spirit of Place would become Goanna's defining work, which won three Countdown Music Awards being Best Debut Album, Best Debut Single for Solid Rock, and Best New Talent. Solid Rock was noted as being the first truly significant rock song to feature the didgeridoo and tackle head-on the issue of Indigenous Australian land rights 
and the injustices brought on to the Australian's First Nation peoples with European settlement. Solar Rock was then followed up with the next single, The Razor's Edge, which was a rework from their 1979 EP. In 1983, along with a gruelling touring schedule, Goanna issued a new single, Let the Franklin Flow, addressing the issue of the destruction of native habitat from the proposed Franklin River Dam and Hydro Power Station in Tasmania. This song reached number 12 on the Australian charts in May of 83. In 1985, after several lineup changes, Goanna began to record the follow-up to Spirit of Place, which was called Oceana, and released in 1985. And it was sonically very different from Spirit of Place, heavily relying on synths and drum machines. Although peaking at a respectable 29 on the Australian music chart, Oceana was the beginning of the end for Goanna. Despite relentless touring and a spot in the Australian leg of Live Aid, called Ozaid, Goenna ran out of steam and Warner Music Group dropped Goenna from their label. In 1998, Goenna briefly returned, releasing a new album called Spirit Returns, as a sister album to 82 Spirit of Place. Soon after again, however, Goenna parted ways. Thanks, Threads. That was uh, very informative. And uh, Oceana was a good album, all right? So that is a brief history of Goenna. And um, yeah, but what we're really talking about is this album. And uh, very exciting. Uh, that's Marsha Howard. She uh, signed it for me. She was performing at a folk club way back when, and I uh, knew she was there. and. Um, took the album and she signed it. It's very kind of her, and I thank her for that. The Spirit of Place has uh, 10 tracks on it, and brilliantly packaged. The artwork, the album cover, is what I remember as a kid going into record stores, always seeing this one, always wondering what it was actually about, but it's got the colours of the um, Australian Aboriginal flag. It's got the uh, straight lines of the modern age, I guess, non-natural features versus the naturalness of Uluru, kind of telling us you know, Uluru, the centre of Australia, is what Australia is all about. It's natural, It's the continent's been around a lot longer than us, but I think the plane, I don't know what it is supposed to symbolise, but when I look at it, I see it's the modern age of man trying to dominate what's been here for millions of years. We've come along and We've dominated the landscape with our modern machinery and the modern technical age. But really, this is the heart of this country, LaRue. I think it's a really great album cover. And the artwork all over the album cover, it's actually not credited, but it is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant imagery. It's just so well packaged. And all the illustrations are to do with the songs. So if you ever get the album, have a good look at the, the packaging. I think it's uh, one of the best. But the album is not just the package, like the songs are all good. Every song from start to finish is listenable. You can tell that the musicians are quality musicians, really thought through their lyrics, really thought through their themes. And it's a pleasure to listen to. And it's so Australian. It is unashamedly Australian. I don't think there were many really Australian sounding records until this album. Uh, this album is so unequivocally Australian that I think it opened the path for other Australian bands to be Australian, to sound Australian, to be proud of that. Goenna were a band of firsts in my opinion and that's why we should remember them and that's why Spirit of Place is such a great album. There weren't many bands with both male and female singer-songwriters taking the helm. So Goenna had Shane Howard, of course. So he was backed up with uh, Rose Bygraves, uh, vocalist, mezzo-soprano, I think, by listening to her, and piano player. Uh, absolute great singer, absolutely great songwriter. One of my favourite songs on the album is uh, On the Platform. It's a slow piano ballad, absolutely beautiful and lush string arrangement. Uh, Trevor Lucas, I think, hit the mark with that one. It's, I'm surprised it hasn't been covered. Rose's other song 
uh, stand your ground, I think is really about injustice towards protesting um, because it talks about police standing at your door with a warrant, the law on their side, but you've got to stand your ground. I don't think they're advocating breaking the law, but I think they're trying to say that if it is an unjust law, then stand your ground, stand up for your beliefs and your convictions. And it's actually got Joe Cavalieri on saxophone in that one. So a bit of a saxophone solo, but sounds really good. Spirit of Place opens with Cheatin' Man. Just a great song to start the album with. Crystal clear recording, tight musicianship just a very good opening track it's not really touching on any political themes or issues that the rest of the album has but um, I think as a song to open the album it draws you in very quickly it's got a very good hook very good riff and uh, you end up just singing along to it and looking forward to the next song which is of course Solid Rock. So the core of the album really is about Australia's First Nations land rights um, the impact of European settlement on First Nations Australians. But as I said, the, that song, Solid Rock, gave confidence to bands to sing about these issues. I believe they paved the way. We wouldn't have had Warumpi Band, Yothu Yindi, or Archie Roach, uh, Kev Carmody, artists like that, without going paving the way for them. We wouldn't have had Midnight Oil, Diesel and Dust tour with Warumpi, uh, Blackfella, Whitefella tour. You wouldn't have had that without Goenna, without Shane Howard getting out there and saying, this, this is what we need to talk about. These are the issues that stop Australia from being a truly amazing, great nation. It already is, but these are the things we have to really nut out. And that ground was laid and bands followed and now it's the Australian protest song is it's everywhere uh, we have such a collection of great songs that deal with these issues that you can listen to in a pub and it's, it's not just background music you go that's a great song like Diesel and Dust is a great song but solid rock when that comes on any radio is just Everyone pays attention to it. Everyone sings along. I've played at gigs playing solid rock and people just go, I love that song. Keep playing it. So it's such a such an iconic anthem in Australia. My absolute favourite go in a moment occurred in the mid-2000s. Um, I was at a Foo Fighters concert, believe it or not, and this is at the Melbourne Tennis Centre. And we were waiting for the uh, warm-up act to get on, uh, Kaiser Chiefs, and I was close to the front of the stage. And next thing you know, I hear this didgeridoo sound really loud. Like, the whole room was filled up with this didgeridoo sound, and I was like, hang on, that's, that's Goanna, that's solid rock. And literally, the buzz went through the crowd, and everyone was singing it, and... It was really amazing. It's the last song, actually, I expected at a Foo Fighters concert, of all things. But it absolutely filled the room. But when it became along unexpected, at a concert of a style of music that you don't associate with Galena Band, and to feel the vibe and the people in the audience just singing along to it and the energy that it got from it, that is my favourite go in a moment and I felt really proud that that song was played and I was just like, I'm the fan! My absolute favourite on the album is the third track, Razor's Edge. Absolutely brilliant song, always love hearing it. I've heard Shane play it a few times live. The recording, however, really captures that spirit and, and mood of being separated from your friends who are trying to take advantage of life and not being able to attain their dreams, um, living on the razor's edge, the image of standing on a razor's edge trying to touch the sun. It uh, really talks about life, the struggles of life. And he does, he subverts our ideas of like the state of Queensland. He says living in Queensland is not okay. Usually Queensland is associated with sunshine and holidays, but you know, this turns it all on its head. Um, and Razor's Edge on the album leads straight into, without a pause, to the next song, Scenes, which is a slightly different uh, topic. I think it's a, an anti-war 
a nuclear war topic awareness song, but it flows so perfectly from Razor's Edge to Scenes, and Ra uh, Scenes just it just delivers. It flows. It sounds absolutely well constructed, well arranged, and it's got a great outro ending. Um, the musicianship is just excellent. It makes you keep on listening. Uh, and that's the great thing about Spirit of Place as an album album. It really keeps you listening, waiting for the next song. Side two of the album starts with a song called Borderline, a beautiful introduction with the sound of uh, ocean waves and a piano introduction by Rose Bygrave. It's just absolutely beautiful, draws you in. And then the song picks up pace uh, and it really is talking about the decisions we make in life and how we've got to just whatever they are good or bad we have to keep going forward and there's a beautiful vocal break in the middle and it really is reminiscent of the Eagles Seven Bridges Road harmonies are just absolutely perfect um, really great arrangement and then again the energy picks up and it's a song of hope that no matter what happens you know people will stick together your friends will stick stick with you and you'll make it through whatever adversaries it's a really good compliment to stand your ground um, excellent choice of song to open the second side so definitely worth a listen four weeks gone the eighth song on the album just another gem song about a drover who has the pull of the outback within him he just has to keep going out to the country and he leaves his wife behind for long periods of time. Another song about loneliness and solitude, very thematic. Absolutely brilliant song, uh, reminiscent of the contemporary bands uh, Red Gum with their song Diamantina Drover, another brilliant Australian song. Once again, go on paving the way with themes and bringing uh, what would be normally reserved for traditional folk songs into the folk rock sphere and another very Australian theme to, to write about. The second last track on the album, Factory Man, keeps the momentum going for the album. It's got a real country sort of a feel, country folk feel, but absolutely brilliant song. It's got a chorus that you just can sing to. It talks about Shane's childhood, um, observing his father going to work. That's where I think the song was inspired from. But it's another gem on the album that you just, you just remember that song and I would love to see that song covered and played more on radio. The album ends with Children of the Southern Land, which is an absolutely remarkable song, especially in its emotional impact. Shane sings with real emotion and it comes out right when you need it to be. Uh, the song is not a happy song, but it really uh, makes you think about the issues presented previously on all the songs, so it really rounds out the album very well. It's got great movement, great backing vocals, great arrangement. Uh, certainly is a really great way to end a really great album. So that's it. Go in at Spirit of Place, an overlooked Aussie masterpiece. Shane Howard is uh, still active today in the music scene. He's released a plethora of solo albums. If you ever get a chance to see him live, then do it. Same with Marsha Howard and Rose Bygrave as solo artists. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you're interested in content like this about Australian culture, film, media studies, mannerisms, anything to do with Australia, uh, then please leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, find me on Facebook, share it with your friends, and uh, maybe I'll be able to do a video that's something that interests you even more. Until then, this is Threads from Me Says. Have a good one.